or afternoon or evening, depending on the country in which you are tuning and joining the Global Business Roundtable, session number 63, what we call the GBR, International Session. And today we have a very interesting topic that we are going to discuss, the relevance of culture in today's society. The relevance of culture in today's society. But before we begin our program, we want to place everything that we are going to do in the hands of our Lord. So let me ask Madam Renalda M. Ley from Tanzania to lead us in the opening prayer of this international session. Madam Tanzania, please. Hello, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, Dr. Ricardo Caderon. Uh, let us start this session about the culture in today's uh, society and today's uh, session. And let us bow and, and pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, by your grace and favor, you created everything just by your word and your wisdom. And you made us all human beings to have authority on all things that you created so that we may rule this world in your ways. As we are coming before you, Lord, to discuss about the culture, we ask you, Lord, to help all the people in GBR family and GFFJ to understand our culture as Christians, our culture as children of God, our culture as people who are put in this world to rule and to guide everything. We give uh, everything to you and we put here all the panelists, the facilitator of this session, Give them your wisdom so that they may guide us throughout the session. We are also praying for all those who were preparing this session. Lord our Father, guide them and give the strength of the Holy Spirit in everything they do. We give all this through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Madam Renalda. Thank you for the opening prayer. Uh, I think it's going to be a great day, a great session. We began with praise and worship. We have just begun with our opening prayer. And we are going to discuss an issue that is very important, culture, the influence of culture in today's society. Culture is defined as all the ways, all the ways of life. And that means all the arts, beliefs, institutions of a population that are passed from generation to generation. And for that, we have today a panelist, an international panel of speakers. From Gabon, we have Mr. Adamzio and Sicily from Lesotho, we have advocate Mary Bosiu. From Eswatini, we have Mr. Lethum Musa Simelane. And from South Africa, we have Madam Nomonde Booi, experts in culture. But before we begin and before we introduce them, specifically with all of their qualifications and experience. Let me tell you that uh, I have the privilege today of being your host, your anchor, the program facilitator. I am Dr. Ricardo Calderon, 
I am the global executive director of the Global Fund for Jesus. And on behalf of Global Fund for Jesus, and on behalf also of the Global Business Roundtable, we welcome everyone, everyone to our international session. Uh, but before we present our speakers, for those of you who are new to the Global Business Roundtable, I will ask our technical team to play the video that describes what is it that we do? What is it that we stand for? And what are our goals, objectives, and purpose? Technical team, team please run the video. The Global Business Roundtable has a God-given mission to focus on the holistic development of people in line with God's plan for his kingdom. The aim of the organization is to help members to grow spiritually, intellectually, to grow their networks and to participate in trade and investment opportunities, to also participate in mentorship and coaching programs and to expand their businesses. Our organization focuses on the holistic development of its members and invests its time and resources in developing people in key sectors, including spiritual growth and development, which is critical to ensure and to foster strong moral values and, uh, and ethics, which we want to inculcate in all our leaders and standards so that we could contribute to the uh, production of a new breed of leaders that will shape and transform Africa and the rest of the globe. Since its launch in Johannesburg, South Africa in 2009, the Global Business Roundtable has impacted thousands of lives around the world. Ten years after its launch, this God-focused organization has a presence in more than 80 countries in the following regions. The Southern African Development Community, East Africa, West Africa, Central Africa, North Africa, Asia, Europe, North America, South America, and the Caribbean. GBR has strategic initiatives, programs, and platforms that facilitate growth and opportunities for its members. This is done through the global and local events such as World Congress, Prayer Camp, and the Thought Leaders Summit, Women of Character Summit, Future Leaders Summit, Trade and Investment Exhibitions and GBR Sessions. These events create an environment for our members and partners to meet, interact, and create relationships that will develop their businesses and lives holistically. GBR also has a TV show called A New Thing, which seeks to educate, inform, challenge, empower and inspire one to live their best lives in line with God's purpose by bringing in several experts from various fields and sectors together. The Global Business Roundtable believes that informed and engaged leaders can make a positive change in the world. The GBR Academy was established primarily to address leadership capacity within the Global Business Roundtable leadership structures. The GBR platform is an online system that exists to create opportunities for personal and professional development. It is poised to further facilitate trade and investment opportunities across nations and industries for big business. For more information on our organization, please visit www.globalbusinessroundtable.com or contact us on plus 2711-242-8000. Thank you, technical team. As you can see, as you watched in the video, the Global Business Roundtable, and we call it GBR, is an international networking organization with the main focus of developing individuals, groups, and businesses. But we extend that to also families, communities, and societies but it's a complete, integral, holistic development of all of them with one, one purpose, to make an impact, to influence all sectors of society, to bring the kingdom of God to earth. Uh, it will be my pleasure to introduce to you our speakers, to talk about this important uh, topic of culture, I have already said that the definition of culture are all of the ways of life, all of the ways of life, which includes the arts, the beliefs, the institutions, and the populations that are passed from generation to generation. 
So that includes codes of manner, dress, language, religion, rituals, art, etc. And culture influences individuals, families, communities, and societies, nations, the world. And that is what we are going to discuss through our speakers. So let me introduce right now the first speaker. Uh, let me provide some advice and some instructions. Uh, please, uh, speakers, you have 15, one, five minutes to present your presentation. Uh, at, minute, at minute, I will turn off my camera. And when you see me again, that means that you have already spent 13 minutes. So you only have two minutes to wrap up. Please help and collaborate with us because we do not want to cut you in the middle of your presentation. So then we be brief, be concise, be precise, and utilize wisely, intelligently these 15 minutes. Our first speaker, our first speaker is Mr. Adamzio N. Sicily, senior. And he's from Gabon, Gabon. He's a born again Christian. He is the founding president of a, a non-governmental organization uh, that is called Gurunde Sene. And Mr. Adamzio, he's an election expert. Uh, and therefore, you know, he's a trainer, he's an educator in el, uh, for electo, electoral observers, uh, accredited by the international organization uh, a la francophone. He is an expert in leadership, in conflict management for electoral candidates and also for political actors. So he is uh, an advocate in democracies, uh, a strategist uh, in international as well as national politics. And he is also a founding chief executive officer of an organization called Alpha and Omega Group, the beginning and the end, and uh, specializing in education and training. So Mr. Adamsio, Welcome to the Global Business Roundtable International Session number 63. And then you may begin your presentation and you have 15 minutes. Good afternoon, Dr. Calderon. I don't see Mr. Adam CEO. I think we can move to the following speaker as we wait for him to join. Thank you. Okay, is the following speaker uh, on the line? Yeah, the following speaker is on the line. Okay, yeah, okay, good. Then uh, we will, uh, if he comes back, then we will introduce him again and then we will give him his 15 minutes. Uh, so let's move to our second speaker. So it's good that we have four speakers so that then if one has any technical difficulties or for any contingencies, we have the other three. Let me introduce then to you, uh, Madam Advocate, Mary Bosiu from Lesotho. Uh, Madam Mary is an advocate. I am, I'm going to read, you have the description. Uh, in this slide, but I'm going to read just the key features, key characteristics of our speakers. Uh, Madam Mary is a lawyer, uh, and she's also a life coach, uh, and, then, and she helps and guides people. Uh, and her area of concentration is really allowing people to become the best they were meant to be. What a noble profession. She's a well-known public speaker, trainer, and author of uh, three 
inspirational books, and she's published articles in various international media houses. Her passion is for holistic development. This is aligned to GBR. Uh, and her seminars have dealt with topics of service excellence, leadership skills, stress management, financial wisdom, team building. Uh, she has worked then extensively on personal development and has gotten many awards in the last four years. And the latest one is an award uh, for as a life <clears throat> achiever. She has facilitated e-mentoring sessions that have benefited many people in several countries, in Lesotho, in uh, South Africa, in Eswatini, in Mozambique, in Senegal, Malawi, uh, US, Benin, and Zimbabwe. And uh, these are programs that are powered by the Global Business Roundtable. And uh, she is a born again Christian that glorifies God in all her thoughts, words, actions, and habits. Uh, so then uh, with you, Madam Advocate Mary Bosiu from Lesotho. Thank you so much, um, Your Excellency. It is uh, my absolute honor, it's my absolute pleasure to be uh, on this platform uh, to talk about um, um, a, a topic that I'm, I'm not quite familiar with, but uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm ready and willing to add my thoughts about it. I've, I've thought about it and uh, I do have a couple of things to say about it. Um, my context obviously will be from the Lesotho perspective because the only culture that I know is the culture of us Basotho as a nation. And uh, my focus will be on, on cultural practices that are good. I'm, I'm not going to focus on, on, on something that I don't quite like. Uh, I want to magnify the good. Okay, in, in my country, we, we have a couple of prophets that have shaped our culture. And um, I am going to share some of them and of course, uh, wind up as to with, with um, my views about whether or not they are relevant to, to um, today, if I may put it like that. Now, le let me talk about uh, the, the prophets. Prophets are essentially words of wisdom. Um, and these ones that I'm going to talk about have actually shaped our culture. Uh, let me talk about the, the prophets that um, speak to work ethic. I will say them in my language, and then of course try by all means to, to, to make sense out of what I've just said by, by translating and interpreting the meaning in there. We, we have a prophet that says, what it means is that you don't get kettle by just sleeping. Why do I use the word kettle? The kettle Madam, Mary, Madam Mary, I'm sorry to interrupt. May I ask you to turn on your video because we cannot see you? <laughs> I was trying to avoid that. Okay. Let, let me do it. Let me. Uh, Excuse me. I hope you are not counting time now. <laughs> if you do it fast, we will not. Uh, I, I don't see how. Oh, I don't see. Okay. Good. Okay. Is, is that fine? Okay. Thank you. I was rather reluctant, but that's fine. Okay. I'm going to talk about the, the proverbs that speak to work ethic. And uh, I'll say them in my vernacular and then translate. We have a prophet that says, meaning that there's no cattle that you'll get as you are sleeping. A cattle represents wealth in my, in my culture. So the essence of this prophet is that you have to work so that you can end up being wealthy, i.e. having cattle. And um, we also have another prophet that says, 
by the time I'm done, you'll be Louis Sesotho. Um, this one says, you, you cannot find any kettle just lying down. You know, you are lying down and you find the kettle lying down waiting for you to crab. There's no such. And um, we have another proverb that says, Mpempe yala pisa. Meaning, if you perpetually beg, you will never stop being hungry. You will always be hungry. And these proverbs are part of our culture and they speak to the work ethic. Now, let me move on and talk about the proverbs that uh, speak to the cooperative spirit. We, we have a proverb that says, Motu, Gimutu, Kabatu, meaning, a person is a person because of other people. It, it encourages people to work together, uh, to, to share the workloads and, and stuff like that. And if I had more time, I would actually elaborate on how we do things or traditionally well, how we used to do things. And um, there, there's um, another work ethic, or it's a cooperative spirit, really. Um, it's not a work ethic. I, I'm on the co uh, prophets that go to the cooperative spirit, building the cooperative spirit. We we have a prophet that says, Sika fana gama siriso asenang pofu. Essentially, what that means is that when you go and console a fellow human being, whether it's an issue of a bereavement or any painful situation in any given family, don't just go there without holding something. You have to go there and, and offer something tangible. Uh, this is part of our culture. In fact, what used to happen when I was still growing up is that um, whenever a lady had just given birth, all the women in the family would go there, pick up the crane from this lady's house and go and grind it and bring the millimil -mill back home. And all this um, speaks to the cooperative spirit. We also have um, a proverbs that uh, talk to the emotional mastery. We need to master emotional mastery. And uh, one of those proverbs goes like this, what it means whenever there is a bereavement, uh, people cry. And uh, if you are the kind of person that uh, cannot control your emotions, people will hurt you eventually. And if you, they will hurt you, what, uh, what will happen is that you'll cry. And you know what happens when, when we cry, stuff happens, you know, your nose will run. And uh, the essence of this prophet is that you'll end up cooking with the stuff that runs, runs out of your nose. This is the essence of this prophet that control your emotions because you will cry one day. And um, I, I want to move away from the prophets and, and talk to the, the, the lessons that we have learned from the founder of the Basutu nation, uh, Mushishu the first. He's one of the, the best leaders that uh, Lesotho, and I dare say Africa, uh, has been blessed with. Um, we, people that are born and bred in Lesotho are called Basutu. And ba Mushishu the first is the founder of the Basutu nation. He brought together tribes from various, uh, um, uh, or, 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 or rather many tribes ran to Lesotho, running away from the tribal wars that were going on in Southern Africa, then they sought refuge. And um, Moshe Shoya was an amazing leader. He, he, he is known to have said, and this has come part of our culture. He has, he's known to have said, what that means is that don't call a bushman a bushman. And um, this goes to um, the discrimination aspect. You, you should never ever discriminate anyone uh, who, is a, who is disadvantaged. Why a bushman? It's because bushmen hide wise physically, they are not like us. They are somewhat on the short side. And, that, that's a, that, that was considered to be a disadvantage. And the essence of uh, these words of wisdom were to the effect that don't discriminate, don't discriminate 
any other person. And um, speaking from the spiritual perspective, whether one is short, whether you are tall, we have been created in the image of God. And um, we shouldn't discriminate because that is not Christ-like. Now I'm talking about the lessons we got from um, our, our, the founder of our nation. Um, he, he is reported to have said, or rather to have referred to peace, the issue of peace. He referred to peace as his sister. That's how much uh, he valued peace. And um, he actually personified peace, if I may say so. And uh, I, I love stories. There are many stories about our, the founder of our nation, but I want to refer to one particular story which, which I find so, so amazing and awesome. Um, it is um, a story of um, a battle that went on between uh, the Basotho nation and um, the Ndebele. At that time, the Ndebeles were, were, were ruled by King or rather chief Musilikas. I, I don't know whether they were called kings or chiefs at that time. I think chief, uh, chief Musilikas. Chief Musilikas had a very, very strong army. And in the Southern African region at that time, it was the strongest uh, army. So in 1831, his army attacked Tababusiu. Tababusiu is a plateau where Mushusha the first was based. This is where he built up the, the Basotho nation. And uh, despite Musilikas' military might, Mushusha the first beat Musilikas. And after uh, this battle, it is reported that um, Mushasha sent the, the Ndebele tribe, tribe a, a gift of cattle as compensation for the fact that he beat them. And uh, you know what happened? Uh, Mzilikas never rearranged his army to reattack the Basut nation. In other words, what uh, our leader did was a peace offering. Now, what the, 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 the cultural pockets that I've referred to now, are they relevant to today's world? And my answer is a big yes. The proverbs that I've highlighted as part of our culture are very, very relevant even today. Um, we need to remember always who we are and whose we are. We are Christians, we are the light, we are the salt. And we cannot be much of a light, we cannot be much of a salt if we don't have an appropriate work ethic. We cannot be much of a light if we don't have a cooperative spirit. We have to work together. In fact, that's why we have the Global Business Roundtable. This is an expression of a, a cooperative spirit. We cannot be much of a light if we are unable to master our, emotion, our emotions. We have to master emotional mastery. We cannot be Christ-like if we discriminate, if we belittle, manipulate, or even despise people that are less fortunate than we are. In fact, we have the Global Fund for Jesus because we care for the less fortunate. So we are on the right track. And this is aligned to the culture that we have as a, as a Basotho nation. Um, we have to seek peace at all times. And if need be, we should be the ones that actually uh, initiate the peace efforts. I, I, I want to respect uh, the time that I've been given and uh, I've come to the end of uh, my presentation. And once again, I want to thank you for having given me this platform to present on this particular and interesting topic. It was a challenge for me and I'm happy that uh, I was able to, uh, to take it up. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you. Uh, we thank you, Madam Mary Bosio, for your presentation. You said you didn't have much to talk about the, the subject, but in reality, 
you provided to us words of wisdom. Let me try to, to summarize the key points of your presentation. Uh, you highlighted uh, the relevance of a key people in Lesotho, from uh, prophets to the founder of the nation. And then from the prophets, you focused on the particular issue of proper developing and having a proper work ethics. And you stressed on the point that proper work ethics uh, relates to the fact that people that are perpetually doing nothing or begging will always be hungry. So therefore, uh, they have, everyone has to have a proper work ethic. Also, you spoke about a corporate spirit and you related that to the connection between people. A person is a person you said because of other people and therefore, Everyone has to be helping everyone, particularly in difficult situations and situations of bereavement. Uh, and also everything leading to emotional mastery. And then you spoke about the founder of the nation of Lesotho, Lesotho that brought uh, the tribes together uh, and addressed the, the tribal wars. And, and here, in this particular founding of the nation, you highlighted two critical issues, the issue of peacemaking and the issue of no discrimination. So in a nutshell, you spoke to us about the influence that people have, their thoughts, their actions on societies, how it affects the culture and the society so that then there can be a proper work ethic, there can be a corporate spirit uh, and a mastery of the emotions, no discrimination and a peace building attitude. And, and, and actually you related everything to being Christ-like. So thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, as we said at the beginning, culture, culture are all the ways of life. So you spoke about the ways of life in Lesotho that are affecting uh, the country positively and that are being passed from generation to generation. Uh, let's uh, move then to our second speaker. Uh, let me double check. Uh, I want to ask uh, my technical team uh, is Mr. Adamsio online? Yes, he is online now. Yes, he is online. So, uh, so I already presented Mr. Adamsio. So perhaps you did not hear your the introduction, but we have already presented who you are, where you come from, and uh, what you do. So, Mr. Adamsio Nisisile from Gabon the founding president of the NGO Gurunde Sene and the expert in elections. Uh, remember, we went over your uh, description, the trainer of electoral observers uh, and the founding CEO of Alpha and Omega. We will grant you the podium right now. You have 15 minutes to speak. I will turn off my camera and uh, when I turn it back on, you have spent already 13 minutes. You have only two minutes to wrap up. So please benefit us from your knowledge and experience about uh, culture and the electoral observers and work that you do uh, in democracy and in national and international politics. Uh, Mr. Adamsio, please, you may speak. Merci, merci, excellence. Comme le veut l'usage, j'aimerais saluer tous les panélistes et tous les participants dans le précieux et parfait nom de Jésus-Christ de Nazareth, notre Seigneur et Sauveur. Et donc, je suis bel et bien, c'est Adam Sio, de Kissiman Tissil Senior, analyste, concepteur, expert électoral, président fondateur de grand -Tien. Et donc, je voudrais préluder mon propos par le préambule de Grunzen, 
Alors, face aux grands problèmes du moment, notamment la paupérisation, la précarité, le chômage, pour ne citer que ces quelques exemples, euh, le Gromsen, qui signifie s'aimer les uns les autres, fonde son existence sur le Conseil et la santé sociale des pouvoirs publics en matière de bonne gouvernance et de justice sociale, et à l'assistance sociale et technique de Gabriel Duc de couche sociale, et euh, au développement et à l'enracinement de la culture dans notre pays au Gabon, en Afrique et ailleurs. Le Grand Sen a pour mission originelle de participer à la construction de la nation gabonaise, du continent africain et du monde, avec amour, dévouement et humilité. Le devenir d'un pays dépend du degré de conscience de sa jeunesse et de l'ensemble de sa population. C'est pourquoi nous pensons mettre en œuvre tous les moyens légaux visant à promouvoir la bonne gouvernance et la démocratie, les droits de l'homme et la paix, par l'observation de la sincérité et la transparence des élections politiques nationales et internationales. Euh, le principe de Grunsen est l'amour. Sa devise est liberté, solidarité, action. Et euh, parlons de notre thème d'aujourd'hui, qui est caractérisé par l'importance de la culture dans la société d'aujourd'hui. Pour Grunsen, qui signifie s'aimer les uns les autres, que je représente dans ma qualité de plus fondateur, la culture est un champ extrêmement vaste, dont le contenu varie entre les mots artistiques, à savoir les arts artistiques et artisanaux, culinaires, les codes vestimentaires liés aux us et coutumes de chaque peuple, les sciences, etc. Le tout est rythmé par une langue véhiculaire, vernaculaire, c'est-à-dire la langue de communication locale. C'est donc un trésor culturel dans lequel chaque membre du groupe culturel déterminé puise l'essentiel qui fait sa personnalité. On est dans le sens là de la culture sociologique. Alors qu'on peut avoir également une culture au sens axiologique, c'est-à-dire que des valeurs au sens de culture générale qui est propre à un individu, qui a enrichi son esprit et sa vision. À titre d'exemple, le président Mugabe était un homme de culture. L'illustre président, qui est une légende vivante, Nelson Madiba Mandela, était un grand homme de très forte culture. Sa majesté, le roi Swatitwa du royaume de Swatini, est un grand dirigeant charismatique affermi dans la culture. Et sans oublier les Titwa, qui est le grand dirigeant, autrement dit sa majesté, du, du royaume du Lesotho, également un homme de culture. Le président Léomba était également un homme de culture. Euh, Excellence, pour ce qui est du cas du Gabon, Grunsen pense que le thème de ce jour, euh, qui est axé sur l'importance de la culture aujourd'hui, c'est-à-dire que la société gabonaise est composée d'une milliarde de cultures qui est apparentée dans un même champ de civilisation bantou. L'unité de ces cultures du nord, du sud, de l'est, de l'ouest et du centre, produit des migrations qu'a connu le Gabon depuis des siècles, a été réalisée grâce à la volonté des autorités de notre pays, le Gabon, depuis l'indépendance. Le thème, l'importance de la culture dans la société aujourd'hui, suscite une problématique. Que reste-t-il alors là de la culture africaine en général et gabonaise en particulier après tant de siècles de colonisation et de tentatives de dislocation. Au Gabon, quoique l'école coloniale n'en finit pas de déplacer le centre culturel vers l'extérieur, la culture reste intacte dans la plupart de nos régions. C'est pourquoi, aujourd'hui, on danse encore le Witi, on s'initie au Mouiri, au Bodhi, au Nzero, on danse le Koukoué, on danse le Njembe, on s'initie à l'Elombo, au Mabanzi, au Mili, au Mlan, ainsi qu'au Njobi, on joue au Mgongo, l'arc musical. On joue également à l'art sacré, qu'on appelle le Ngombi, qu'on peut aussi également appeler la Sita. Et les mariages se font de manière traditionnelle, ainsi que les naissances et les cérémonies de deuil. Alors, ce qu'il faut pour que les sociétés urbaines n'accélèrent pas l'aliénation culturelle, pour Gronsen, en tant qu'organisation associative, en tant qu'ONG, nous pensons qu'il est temps que nous puissions repenser l'enseignement par des programmes pratiques de base qui intègrent l'enracinement et l'ouverture de la culture, comme le voulait le président poète Léopold Sédar Senghor. 
pour que notre dignité, notre honneur et notre respect, ainsi que pour ceux de nos enfants et les enfants de nos enfants, restent intacts de génération en génération. En plus de cela, euh, en ce qui concerne l'Afrique, nous pensons que nous les Africains, nous gagnerons à développer les industries culturelles, notamment le théâtre, les festivals, les ballets, les rites traditionnels, etc., etc. Alors, euh, chères Excellences, chers participants, en somme, Grunsen pense que la société actuelle pourra se ressourcer en revisitant fondamentalement ses racines culturelles. Ainsi, par la restauration culturelle, se fera une mondialisation positive où l'Afrique apportera sa culture au rendez-vous du donner et du recevoir. Vive l'Afrique, vive notre tradition pour que vive la culture. Que nos ancêtres, l'éternel de Tout-Puissant, l'auteur et l'inventeur de la culture, créateur de l'invisible et du visible, Jésus-Christ de Nazareth, protège et bénisse toujours l'Afrique en général et le Gabon en particulier, ainsi que le monde entier. Euh, je vous remercie pour votre attention. Voici pour l'instant ce que Gronsen, qui représente le Gabon, pense en ce qui concerne la culture en général, en particulier celle de notre pays. Je vous remercie. Uh, we, we thank you, Mr. Adamsio, uh, for your brief presentation. Actually, you spoke uh, seven minutes, so you give us time to uh, make uh, several comments. Uh, thank you for leading the non-governmental organization um, for the social uh, causes, uh, the development and promotion of culture in Gabon. Uh, the key takeaway that we take from your presentation is that the future of countries, not only of Gabon, but that you mentioned, the future of countries depends on the culture. So then it's going to depend on that, all of these qualities and characteristics that we are talking about uh, that are unique to each of the population groups, each of the communities, and each of the countries. Uh, You cited several presidents uh, uh, in Africa primarily, uh, and you called them men of culture for the impact that they made, the positive impacts that they made on each of the countries and Africa as a whole. And you also uh, stressed on the fact that uh, schooling, these schools, Uh, there has to be a reinforcement of the curricula so that then the, the positive traditional cultures, uh, the positive traditional features and characteristics are passed from generations to generations and they are not lost. Uh, and then you ended relating your presentation with the influence that Jesus Christ made on culture not only for Gabon and Africa, but also for the entire world. And uh, one particular thing that you said is that love has to be the center of uh, the cultural qualities and characteristics that have to be passed from uh, country to country and also from society to society, from people to people. So we thank you, Mr. Adamsio, uh, for your presentation. Before I introduce our next speaker, since we have uh, some time, uh, let me ask a question. This is a, a rhetoric question, okay? I mean, just answer it uh, in, uh, in, your, in your minds. And uh, when we talk about culture and cultural influences, do you know that there is uh, a ranking of the most influential cultures? Yes, there is a ranking. And uh, do you know? which is the country that this ranking is saying that is the most influential country. I'll give you a minute, I mean, just to think about it for a couple of seconds, because I will mention that to you. Uh, so think about the most influential country, okay? Is it one in America? Is it Asia? Is it Europe? Is it Africa? Is it Oceania? 
Okay, I'll give you the response. Italy, Italy is said to be the most influential country. Well, there are several types of rankings, but the ranking from US News and World Report is telling us that Italy is the most influential country with, with its machinery and transport equipment, with its chemical, its fashion and, and apparel, the wine and the cuisine. Do you know which country is number two? Uh, is it uh, in any of the continents or is it again in Europe? Yes, it's Europe, it's France. France uh, with science, with politics and economics. Uh, and do you know which one is number three? And I will stop there and then present the next speaker, the United States. Uh, uh, the United States cultural imprint spans across the globe. Okay, and it's due primarily to its uh, uh, popular culture expressed through music and all of the movies that we have watched and the television. And also because of the, it's a dominant economic and military power. So now we are uh, uh, relating our topics to countries that have an influence on other countries uh, because of uh, uh, features that they have. So then number one, Italy, number two, France, number three, USA. I will let you know more about the others when we come back after our next speaker. Uh, so let me go to the next speaker. Uh, uh, let me quickly go to the description of our next speaker. You have uh, the description on this slide. I will only highlight key, key qualities and characteristics of uh, Mr. Lethumusa Similane from Eswatini. He is a senior activist uh, focusing on research and oral history at the Eswatini National Ar Archives, uh, which, which is uh, a branch of government, uh, government under the Ministry of Information and Communications and Technology. He has a double, okay? He has a twin. Uh, and then uh, they grew up in uh, the area of Halatsi Laguba. It's a rural area. So being from a rural area and living in a rural area, then he believes he has a lot. And we also, because of the area in which he lived, uh, he learned a lot about the realities, about culture, about the customs, the traditions, and life in general. Uh, he holds a Bachelor of Arts in Humanities and History, and uh, with uh, concentrations in history and English as majors. And he has also worked as a teacher uh, joining the Eswatini National Archives. Uh, Mr. Simelani, welcome to uh, the Global Business Roundtable. Uh, we will give you now 15 minutes to make your presentation on the relevance of culture in today's society. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. Uh, for giving me this rare opportunity to be part of this uh, discussion. And thank you very much uh, colleagues and participants for having time to listen to various presentations. I will share my presentation and I will try to rush through because because of, uh, uh, of time. My presentation will be mainly focused on Eswatini, uh, since that's what I, I know best. Thank you. Uh, I hope you are seeing my presentation. The relevance of culture in today's society. Uh, 
uh -huh. we know the definition of culture that it is defined as characteristics and knowledge of a particular group of may people. I, may, may I just may I just interrupt? Uh, we are seeing your presentation. Thank you. But we are listening to the French translation. So may I ask the technical team to take care of this technical issue so that then we only hear the English presentation. And for those of you okay, who want you. to hear the translation, you can hear it individually. So please, okay. I'm sorry for interruption. Please continue. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Excellency. Uh, as we know that the definition of culture, it has to do with people's language, religion, social habits, music, uh, ads, to name a few. My presentation will be basically on the Swati culture. We, the Swazis, we originate from Embo, today known as Kenya. And there are three groups of Swazis that came together to form a country known today as a Swatini. And one reason why we are so proud that we have a culture, it's because what happened, of what happened in the past with regards to surnames. We Swazis, we value surnames. A person's surname is very, very important. When you talk to a person in our culture, we refer mainly to that person's surname. And that person's surname is not just a surname, it has got its own praises. And these praises and surnames, they emanate from habits that were done by these people in the past. As you know that the population in different countries it keeps on growing, but there was a time whereby people were very small in number. When it originated in Embo around 1600, or before, we were not the 1.2 million that we are currently in Swaziland. So what happened? Surnames to us, they symbolize something and they are very important aspect of our culture. Your surname tells us a lot about you and it gives us your position in society. Let me make a good example. We have the Laminis who are many in Swaziland. How did these surnames originate? Lamini originated from Embo. There was Lamini and Lambula. So Lamini came this side and Lambula remained in Embo, Kenya, if still today, where they reside, his descendants. They attacked the Nyasa people who brought daylight. And because of that heroic act, because during that time you couldn't attack a person during the day you will attack them at night so they did the unthinkable they attacked them broad daylight during the day and they were given now the name lamin which then was given to the leader so now they migrated down south they reached uh, mozambique they moved down lubombo mountain to a place today in south africa called Pongolo. And their heroic movement then made them to have praises. Thus, we praise them. Lamini ngosi when I look at Zelbombo and Kheshete la Ubopelelo Gushem Funti, we figure Kanza Nilwena, but we don't shum lange, which is the heroic movements which they did along the way. Then, as they were moving, then they met other people, and through meeting those people, they married from those clans. Now, marriage also played a very important part. Marriage then became our cornerstone. In what sense? In the sense that by marrying from different clans, the Laminis, they are marrying from the, 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 the Matsebulas, the, the, the Mambas, the Gunenes, the different surnames that are there in, in, in Swaziland. So with us, the position of the mother is more important than the position of the father. So we value the mother. That's why in our coat of arms, we have the lion, which represents the king, and we have the she elephant, which represents the queen mother. The lion, which represents the king, says the lion is the king of the jungle, but the lion can never rule the jungle without the assistance of the she elephant, because elephants, they are known 
as animals that have the sixth sense, it's the female, the eldest elephant that leads the pack. It's the female eldest elephant that knows where the water pool is and it knows where they can lead the, 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 the others for crazy. So it's the lion and the she elephant. So marrying from these different lands, then these women, they came with their different cultures and customs, and they brought those cultures and customs to the royalty. We have some Jalosis Milani who ruled with the King Somsolo, 1815 to 1836. This was the time when the, the Swazi state was being formed. We have Sanzile Ndwandwe who introduced, who came from the Zulus. She introduced a umhlanga. We used to have our own umhlanga then, but she made the umhlanga that we have today to be what it is. She came with inkwala, which is our sacred ceremony, which we always have a, around December. Then we have Labotibeni Mzuli, who brought a, a education. She's the one who helped King Sopuza II to grow up and be installed in 1921. Now, these women, as they are coming to marry in Swaziland, our culture then began to grow. We have this Likuma. Likuma, as you can see it in my, in my uh, uh, screen, it's made of reeds. This is a university. It's where these two professors and doctor, whom I will call the grandmother and the mother, it's where they teach young girls it's where they teach a, 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 those females who have just joined, who have just graduated into marriage. It's where these two people teach them how to behave and how to grow up to be wise women in the future. Even the mother, she learns a lot from the grandmother whom I've termed the professor. So this is their place where they, are, they carry all those teachings. These girls, as they are being taught, they then grow up to join these festivities. One of them is the Umshanga, the Rit Dance, which is always around the August, end of August, then the first week of the September. Rit Dance, it promotes abstinence. As you know, even biblical, you are not supposed to have sexual intercourse before marriage. Our culture, the Swati culture, it also promote that, no sex before marriage. So these girls, as they participate in the read, they are supposed to be pure virgins. They abstain from sexual activities. Once you have started indulging in sex, you are no longer supposed to participate in this cultural festivity. And once you are married, you are no longer qualifying to participate with these young maidens here. That's why you can see even on, on their tops, their breasts are outside, which shows that they are proud that they are still young virgins because they have been taught and they are growing up to be girls who will be proposed in future. You can see the other one, these ones be here. They are wearing this long skirt called the Inlamu, which shows that they are still virgins. And then there are those who are wearing this, we call situash, which is this piece of cloth, these two, as you can see them, which symbolizes that they are now engaged, which means now they are being prepared for, for marriage. The others who are wearing the, 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 the injam, it means they are still young girls. They have not yet started being in relationship. These ones, now they are ready for marriage. Then there comes our traditional marriage, which you can see, the girl bladder which plays a very important role in the Swati marriage. We are combining two people who are from two different families. They are brought together through the gallbladder in the traditional marriage. This is the traditional marriage now, which shows that the dress code of the girl will now change because she's now a married woman. Her breast has to be covered. Her body has to be covered because she's now a married woman. Then we had a, another very important figure in our culture, the grandfather, who is a CEO, I will term in my term. He is the one who is in charge of the family. He is the one who teaches boy in this place called Lisang, which is our university, where boys 
sit with the grandmother and the father, the grandfather, I mean to say, and the father. This is where boys are being taught how to behave, how to uh, 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 behave in society. And they are taught the principles of manhood. They are taught to persevere in life. They will go and they will be sent uh, during the Inkwala ceremony to go and fetch the sacred Lusegwane tree, which has thorns, which tells us young boys that the life of a man is a thorny journey. It's not easy to be a man. You have to work very, very hard for you to be a man tomorrow. So they have to walk for a distance of more than 22 kilometers fetching this sacred Lusegwane tribe. It's, it's during sunny days and they will be carrying this Lusegwane tree, which shows that they are being taught to persevere in life. They have the university, they have got these two important professors there, the father and the grandfather who are there to teach them. And now they have graduated. They are joining the Swati people, Swati nation in the sacred Inkwala ceremony, which we usually have in December. In my conclusion, the question is, is culture still relevant? in our society, especially today, looking at the time we are living in, a time whereby HIV and AIDS has removed to all the elderly people who were the cornerstone of our culture. The time whereby Corona barriers has added salt in the wound. The time whereby we have moved from the rural areas and now, now we are dwelling in the urban areas and we have neglected the structures that were shaping us to be mature and intelligent men. The time whereby education has changed it, its value. We now classify ourselves as educated because of the PhDs and the the degrees and the masters that we have, we are holding and the key positions we are holding in our various companies and various organizations. Is culture still relevant in a society whereby the Western education has now sub subtracted the traditional education, which was grooming us, especially as young Swazis, to be very intelligent leaders of tomorrow. Is the culture still relevant in a society whereby religion has also taken its own dimension? It has erased certain fundamental cultural values. We no longer see people mourning the dead. We are now, we have now shifted our focus and we have now deemed the other structures of our culture as demonic. Is culture still relevant in a society whereby technology has taken everything? That question I'm leaving up to you uh, viewers to answer, because to me, culture is still relevant, but we, the people who are living in our society today, we have answered the question that culture is no longer relevant because of the way we are upholding ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for a very interesting uh, presentation. Thought, very thought provoking pre presentation. And uh, to me coming from Latin America, I am speaking to you from Guatemala, from Central America, from the Latin culture, from the Hispanic culture. Uh, uh, I congratulate you and I thank you for your presentation. Very informative and very educational to me. And I think to all of us, you reminded us of the critical importance uh, coming from the Swati culture, from the three uh, population groups that make up the Swati culture, of the critical importance of the family names, of the surnames, and you connected that to uh, two critical figures, two 
pivotal figures uh, in Eswatini, the position of the mother, okay? Which in your culture, you mentioned that uh, it's more important than the father. And you gave us a very interesting example of the, the uh, dominance and preeminence of uh, the females in the, the animal kingdom, because you spoke about the lion, you spoke about the sheep, and you spoke about the elephants. And then you connected that position of the mother to the Liguma Girls University, in which the professor and the doctor, which is really the grandmother and mother, are the teachers, the role models for young girls. And uh, very interestingly, you mentioned that uh, this is the way that then uh, girls are learn how to behave, learn how to grow up, to become wise. And uh, you gave us the example of uh, the tradition of the reed, uh, in which the key cultural feature is abstinence, no sex before marriage. Uh, that's very tied to Christianity and what we believe uh, in terms of uh, uh, a mer merit, a premarital sex or extramarital sex or uh, sexual uh, intercourse. So no sex before marriage promoted in these rituals, in the read. Uh, and then you also spoke about the grandfather and the role that he plays. And you related that to the Lisango University for Boys where they are taught another key feature. Uh, perseverance in life. Uh, so very interesting. So the key takeaways, you know, uh, for uh, women that you mentioned, okay, this abstinence, uh, and then uh, until they get married, and uh, for men, perseverance. And then you asked a very interesting question. Is it relevant or not relevant because time, education, religion, and technology are taking it away? Uh, Western influence on society, and therefore you stress the importance of reinforcing the cultural features of the people of uh, Eswatini. Thank you. Thank you much for uh, these uh, learnings and for this information that you have shared with us. We will move now to our uh, fourth and last speaker. Uh, let me double check. Uh, yes, we have this slide for our fourth speaker. Uh, and the, our next speaker is, is coming from South Africa. Uh, Maram Nomonde Bo'o'oi. I trust that uh, all of you uh, recognize my Hispanic and Latin pronunciation of your last names. I'm doing my best to pronounce them, okay? Uh, Maram Nomonde. Uh, has worked as a social worker for 15 years. And uh, she does this with individuals, with communities and groups. And interesting, the groups that she mentions is a correctional facility. Uh, in, in 2005, uh, she started to work for a non-governmental organization uh, uh, that addresses uh, the needs and priorities of people living with disabilities. And then she transitioned to becoming a facilitator in cultural conversations, uh, primarily focusing on two particular groups, on women and then also on youth, future generations. Uh, she is currently working at uh, the NGO, facilitating these conversations. She has a Bachelor of Arts in Social Work, and she's also a qualified coach. Uh, I'm going to give you the microphone right now, Madam Nomondi, for your 15 minutes uh, of presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Program Director, fellow excellencies, fellow speakers, and a special greeting to uh, Professor Sipom Seleku. And what an interesting topic, culture. Culture is important. And for all things we do and the beliefs that create religion, culture is important. The wars that we see are shaped by culture. 
and the way of life and many challenges are driven by the culture. Have you heard about the culture of entitlement? That is one of the one that is co-created in society. The first things we must define is what culture is and why is it important? And the definition of culture is it actually problematic is that it is notoriously difficult to term, uh, term to define culture. But according to Clarkon, uh, 1951, culture consists in patterned ways of thinking, feeling, reacting, acquired and transmitted mainly by symbols. And they are constituted by distinctive achievements of human groups, including their embodiments in artifacts. The essential core of culture consists of traditional ideas and, speci and especially their attached values. We have heard about uh, Mushwesho the king. That is a distinctive achievement of a human group, the Basutu nation. And also culture can refer to society and its way of life. And it is defined as a set of values and beliefs or a cluster of learned behaviors that we share. Learned behaviors, you saw the gogo there and the, and, 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 and the newly word where they are transmitting the knowledge that the gogo has into the next generation of a woman who's marrying into that um, uh, family. With others uh, in, in a particular society, giving us a sense of belongingness. Culture gives us a sense of belongingness and um, identity. It is our essence. Because of this, cultural understanding is becoming even more important because of the call to interact with many individuals and other cultures. We are online. There's a culture of communication in terms of technology that we are engaging in. I would have not been able, uh, uh, you know, exposed to your excellency, Ricardo. He is from the Hispanic nation. I am in the South of Africa and I belong to a group, a society and a clan, and it, it, extend, it extends to many things. So culture is quite important. So broadly, um, uh, broadly in 1999, further adds three basics, components of culture, namely what people think. There's a thinking tank behind any culture. And we are calling them now thought leaders. There are people who are innovative in societies. It's because of the culture. It, 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 these things never just landed on people. They are influenced on how they think, how they are given space to even exert themselves and execute them, themselves in terms of the things that they really uh, create. And, um, the, and the material project, uh, pro products they produce, they tell you about people's cultures. People are known for many things. Nations are known for many things that they produce. Their excellence is known through their cultures. You know them, you know of them because of what is behind their culture. They are nations that are known for really exerting themselves, overperforming. You know, that, those, those that work tirelessly. There are those that are known for their food. They are known for their spirit, that they are known for, for their dress sense and how they, 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 they love people, how they relate. Others are known for their creation. Many things that really calls for us to preserve the culture. What forms culture take, uh, uh, depends on what individuals human can think, imagine and learn, as well as on the collective behaviors that shape and sustain viable pat patterns of life in ecosystems. Cultures must be thinkable, learnable, as well as livable. The cultures that we have left behind, they were not livable. They, no, they were not relevant. They are not relevant to the time that we are living. Things we term as bad in culture, they had their context and they served their purpose. That's how we arrest them. We now leave them behind and reformulate a new way of living, learning from what we were from. I am going to be generalistic and just indicate and, and demonstrate of how 
and why culture is important, the role of culture in society. We didn't appear in the world uh, as, 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 as big human, um, as my niece called call, call me. A, we, we started from where we were infants. We, 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 we were young at some stage. And human beings take many years to mature and become a functional adult. For you to function, there are aspects that have been transmitted that has shaped you as an individual. It is only through culture that a human being can protect and take care of their own infants as they go through the various social and biological developments. Culture provides the means of protecting not only human infants, but also the old adults, the widows, the orphans, the disabled, the sick and the weak ones. The function of culture therefore summarizes almost of human development as we know them in Africa and the worldwide. Culture is important globally and it is important in Africa and other countries. So the most generally referred to things that make culture that play a role is those cultural elements that used to exploit natural resources for human survival and comfort. Nobody just woke up and thought about there is gold somewhere. There was an explorer, there was a scientist in that community, in that culture, who drove that thinking and who was followed by others. So exploration and, and, and extracting of our natural resources just didn't uh, fall from the sky. There was a culture that drove people to explore and even think and recognize that gold or diamond, it's a valuable resource. We can extract it and we can trade in it and we can live from it. That was driven through culture of thinking and innovation. And there is also uh, aspects, those that are aimed at maintaining biological continuity of members of society by imparting norms, beliefs, and values of marriage and family, life for regulating heterosexual relations. Imagine if we didn't have norms, we, no, we didn't have beliefs, what kind of society would we be? What would we, pour, we, 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 we impart on the coming generations? It's because those who are wisdom holders, the warriors of the, of, 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 the, of the community or a nation who have lived and made mistakes prior to those that are coming, then they can impart and say, and come with all those, uh, 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 the, 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 uh, uh, what my uh, advocate uh, uh, spoke about. Those things were coined because people had seen before that and then the idiomatic expressions came to, to caution those that are coming that if you are going to sleep, you're not going to eat. Paul, what, did, what does Paul say? Those who do not work, they don't eat. And we, we move on that those beliefs and the norms and values of marriage and family, then they are passed on that in, in this family, in this society, in this culture, we believe in marriage. And they define the types of marriage they, 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 that, that is allowed in those uh, societies. You, you've heard how the Your Excellency spoke about virginity, how girls are taught to preserve themselves, to wait for the right time to engage in sexual relations. And women would pass those norms and values to them. They don't just happen. They don't just know. They don't just decide that, no, you know, they, they, they are groomed. They are told that, you know what, there they are, they, 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 they are rites of passage that they go through. They are told that now you are a girl. You are a mature. You are, you are a fertile woman. You, may pro, you, you can produce. So if you have sexual relations with a, 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 a person of an opposite sex, now know that what's going to happen. But we advise you that you preserve yourself until you are ready. So those are the things that are passed on as culture. And they are there also, they're still incumbent in our belief system, us who are in the Christian faith and many other faiths that says, preserve yourself. This is marriage, it needs to be conducted in this manner. 
And there are those aspects of culture that are directed towards socializing young members into functional ad adults by implanting norms I've spoken about. Those aspects of, uh, of culture which aim at organizing production distribution. We have businesses, guys. We work. We wake up to go to work. And I mean, who knew that people would wake up at five and go? It's because in the beginning, people used to produce they, uh, 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 their own food. They used to go out and hunt, and they knew the times. They knew the time of the day. They would not go out in any in, 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 in other time. If we go to, to, to the planting fields, you would not wake up at 12 and say you are going to plant. People knew that you had to woke, wake up early. And then if we are going to ditch those things, we don't have a foundation. The foundation that uh, uh, Advocate Busu is imparting now to people to promote excellence, it started from there. Now in another context. And there are those cultural uh, uh, norms, those are aiming at law and order. Imagine if we were not regulated. There was a lehota. There was a, a, a lehota that said and said, uh, people should not kill each other. I mean, Mushosho, we are told it was a man of peace. So do you think he would have allowed people fighting? So there are norms. Culture is important. Law didn't just emerge from the sky. Law started from the beginning. Cultures had their own way of doing things. That's why you know there's a textbook on private law. There's a textbook on African law. There's, mechan there's different kinds of laws that you find, uh, the school of laws. So it tells you that they were informed by the cultures where people came. You, you can imagine where we began, where people used to trade and the trade was governed by, 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 by certain rules and procedures. And that's where people saw and then said, oh, okay, there could be a profession called law that would really, the law of contracts, law of, of, of many things that, 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 that um, uh, would govern you know, business and, 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 and how people live with each other. So it is important that we know Culture tells us that where we come from and where we are going. And the young people need to know that these things that they read and come and, and gloat about, they are coming from somewhere. They were influenced by culture. And then there's our cultural aspects of organizing human population in culturally defined social order by creating for them a common language of communication. I mean, there is a prefix before I can speak to my mother. I mean, the word mother, I would not call my mom with her name and say, you Lerato, no, as we are called this day, you guys. In, 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 in cultural terms, there is a, a, at most a respect that we attach to the elders. There the are prefixes in, in that are attached to respecting the, the status of the people we live with. Our aunts, our uncles, our whoever has a social status in families. So the, the, the form of communication needs to be like that, whether in corporate, whether in, 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 in social settings, and even in, in our settings, as members of GBR, we are excellencies and we afford each other the respect that needs to be, uh, to be done like that. And even the form of communication of, you, we can't speak over each other. We listen, we pay attention. So culture, those things, those norms and values are transmitted through family. School, it's another problematic area of culture because Currently, our children are sent into schools where the culture is different from the culture at home. And you can imagine the culture clashes or the acculturation that happens when children bring home aspects of culture that do not align to who we are as a family. But you know, there's cultural relativism and acculturation, and you know, a cultural assimilation where we say, if it doesn't kill us, let's let's continue with life. And then 
those aspects of culture also summarizes all aspects of human development in any society, whether you go to his, the Hispanics, whether you go to the Italians, whether you go to the French, and they must be sustained as a basic in any constitutional development in, in, in any uh, uh, country. So it is important that we preserve them. So culture is dynamic and complex in its nature and culture is fluid rather than static. We were not wearing scarves, jackets. We did not have spectacles. I don't know how did they manage to see in those days, which means that culture changes all the time. And every day we are creating a culture as we speak, as we interact now, culture is being created in subtle and tangible ways because human communicate and express their culture system in variety of ways. Life is littered with examples of how cultures evolve, how cultures bring people into conflict with themselves, outside of themselves, in community and in society. The wars are fought, ways of thinking emanate. There are many that I even, even trip myself over. Culture loses its purity. There is no culture that is pure program director. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we appreciate this powerful presentation that you have given us. And we bless you uh, for your knowledge and your insights and your experience. Uh, in a nutshell, you told us uh, something very critical and that is that life, life, everything is shaped by culture, okay? shaped by the embedded ways of thinking that are acquired and transmitted mainly by symbols and achievements. Uh, you spoke to us about uh, the sense of uh, belongingness and identity, the essence that makes up uh, people, individuals and communities and nations. Uh, you spoke to us about the thinkable, the learnable, and the livable culture that is dynamic and that is changing, constantly changing. And you also spoke about uh, bad uh, characteristics and features of culture that we have to leave behind and that we have to reformulate them only to continue with the positive uh, aspects. Uh, you brought again to us uh, the example of the culture of marriage uh, uh, in, uh, that, that we heard from one of the speakers about virginity and waiting for the right time, you know, to the rite of passage from a girl to a woman uh, to become a mother. Uh, you also mentioned to us the, the critical importance of a culture of loss. Okay, uh, from which then all of the laws of the country uh, derived. And also, uh, you mentioned something very important. And to all of us, and for those of you who are for the first time tuning into our Global Business Roundtable International session, uh, you will hear us introducing each other or speaking many times as your excellencies, because this is the culture that we are promoting. We are a royal priesthood. Uh, kings and priests in the kingdom of our Lord. And therefore we treat each other with respect and we honor each other by referring to each other as your excellencies. Uh, I usually uh, in my previous positions have, have promoted a culture of excellence, of high performance, of integrity and accountability. So then, uh, as our speaker was saying, Madame Nomondi, uh, culture is dynamic, culture is changing, but we have to be very careful because we want to, to continue with the positive uh, traditions and norms and the characteristics of cultures, and we have to preserve them. Uh, and then Madame Nomondi uh, reinforced the critical importance of uh, the, a culture of assimilation. Uh, it's, it's a global village, you say, it's a, it's a globalization, uh, may affect uh, positively and has many advantages, but it could have some disadvantages. So we want to preserve really what helps the individuals, what uh, promotes the individuals, 
what grows the individuals, uh, what benefits individuals, and not uh, the, the poor characteristics or qualities or things that will hurt or damage individuals and families. Uh, thank you. We thank all of our speakers, uh, all of the, these excellencies that have, have spoken uh, for uh, elaborating on the critical importance of culture. Uh, let me uh, open up the microphone uh, to see if you have any questions and or primarily to ask for comments from any of our speakers that would like to add, but, but please, you have to be brief, just one minute, the most two. So let's take one or two or three individuals to add to the discussion of culture uh, and its relevance in today's society. Do we have anyone who wants to mention or say anything? I'm looking for hands of anyone. Okay, I'm not, uh, if, if I'm missing a hand, uh, someone can tell me. Otherwise, let me tell you, we mentioned that uh, Italy, you know, it's machinery transport equipment, number one. We mentioned that France, okay, extends around the globe uh, through science, politics, and economics. We mentioned the USA, the cultural imprint expressed through music, movies, and television. Do you want to know which country is considered the fourth most influential one? Can you guess? It's the United Kingdom uh, through its international, economic, political, scientific uh, influence. Also, Japan is number five, okay? Uh, and it's one of the world's most literate and technically advanced nations and largest producers of motor vehicles, electronic equipment, and steel. So now you can see how countries influence the rest of the world through different qualities, characteristics, products, services, etc. cetera. Uh, just quickly, before we go into uh, our next uh, section, just to uh, entice uh, your appetite of knowing what other countries are considered most influential, number uh, six is Spain, then South Korea, then Switzerland, Germany, uh, Sweden, and China. Okay. Uh, I did, I, I, I'm not seeing any hands, so then we do not have any questions or comments, so then we appreciate again all of these speakers and excellence that have spoken. I do see a hand from Dr. Roberto Calderon, he is our Global Business Roundtable Executive Director, so Dr. Roberto, please. Thank you, Your Excellency, and thank you for all the uh, attendees to this uh, important international GBR session. I just want to make a small comment and to uh, rephrase what uh, some of the uh, excellent speakers have spoken about. And uh, let me say that uh, different societies have different cultures. And let's remember that a culture represents the beliefs and practices of a group, while society represents the people who share those beliefs and practices. Culture is so important because culture defines situations. Each culture has many subtle cues which define each situation. Culture defines also attitudes, values, and goals. Each person learns in his culture what is good, what is true, and what is beautiful. And culture defines myths, legends, and the supernatural. Uh, and lastly, I would like to mention that uh, culture is the element which triggers the critical process of socialization. Culture builds the society since the norms, values, and lifestyle give rise to a society. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, Dr. Ricardo Calderon. Uh, no, we, we, we thank you for uh, complimenting, for supplementing uh, with your uh, remarks, the discussion, and now we will uh, have uh, another hand. We have Your Excellency Hilda Feto. Uh, then, uh, yes, could you please uh, let us know what you think? Please, uh, Your Excellency Hilda. 
Thank you so much, uh, Excellency Ricardo. Thank you so much. Wow, how, how wonderful. What broad-based um, presentations, amazing, covering everything. But I just have two points to comment. I thought someone would lift their head and comment. Um, I'm, 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 I'm concerned a bit about how this regarding or leaving some of our cultures behind has caused a lot of social problems within our families and children. Because what I'm picking up mostly, well, I don't know in other countries, because we adults have sort of selectively maybe chosen certain cultures and moved them on, and others that like the Swazi culture, the Sutu culture, in fact, in every nation, cultures that were keeping the family units together and they were uh, uh, encouraging respect between adults and children, like the Mkulu and the Gogos, the old ladies, have actually been left behind. As a result, you have now a new breed of children and grandchildren who are, who are sort of losing their identity to good moral you know, um, the values and norms. That's the first point I wanted. It's, it's sort of a comment. And how can we really regroup and, and check that it, 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 as we are being emancipated, if you like, or moving on, we shouldn't be leaving certain important values that are, are more making us who we are and they've kept our, 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 our nation together. Then um, uh, uh, Advocate Mary Wow spoke so well about them that if we want to be Christ-like nest, to, to be Christ-like as, 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 as people, we, we, we need to understand that we cannot be Christ-like if we disregard or undermine or, 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 or sort of judge uh, other people's cultures based on where we come from and our own background. Because if you are Christ-like, you, you would be a person who would accept people for who they are and, and, and without wanting to change them because you feel they don't fit your, your, your status or something. And one of the last points I want to say is that as GBR and JFFJ, one thing I've noted, Your Excellency, over the years is that being culture sensitive to each other, you know, as, 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 as members of GBR coming from different nations, countries, and nations, as we grow exponentially, even as we, the borders would open and travel again, I realize that you, you you would meet people who do not who are totally different or who have grown totally different to how you understand yourself or how things should be done. And for me, it's saying to us that we need to be studying each other's cultures uh, sensitively and and that we may be tolerant to those who are not like us as a result, that we may respect and uh, uh, respect each other as members of GBR and be able to grow in a balanced way as an organization uh, so that at least the things that would cause conflict in the future would be Thank kept you. or wouldn't have things that would not understand or, or fight amongst ourselves. So all, all in all, I am so blessed by all the presentations and wow, how powerful Excellency Boy presented. I, I'm grateful, Excellency. Thank you so much for Thank all you. that has been said. Thank you for your comments, Your Excellency Hilda. And we will take one more comment. We want it to be very brief, one minute uh, if possible, or to the most, from uh, Your Excellency Priscilla Cauya. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency. I just wanted to add about the importance of culture. In organizational leadership, we talk about the saying or the quote that was made by Peter Drucker that culture eat strat eats strategy for breakfast. Others, they say, uh, culture eats strategy for lunch. What it means is that you can have a very good strategy in a society, and a society could be an organization in terms of a company, or it could be a family, it could be a, a setting, like in this case, this G GBR platform where we are, we can have a very good strategy, but if the culture is against that strategy, that uh, strategy is going to be eaten by that culture. This is of, of, uh, emphasizing the fact that culture is very important and also emphasizing the fact that as Christians, we need to make sure that the cultures that we are embracing are in line with the word of God. 
There are a lot of good things in our cultures, but there are also a lot of bad things in our cultures. So we need to make sure that the culture we are embracing is in line with the word of God because it is going to eat our strategy of trying to be who Jesus would be if he was here on earth in our generation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for all of your comments, uh, Madam Hilda. Thank you for reminding us the critical importance of the family unit and working to keep this family unit that is being attacked by different uh, cultures uh, and different modes of thinking. And Madam uh, Priscilla, thank you so much for reminding us about uh, the leadership culture of uh, Peter Drucker. I want to humbly share with you that uh, I was a professor also at Claremont Graduate University in California. Uh, developing combined MBA and MPH, Master of Public Health uh, programs at the Peter Drucker uh, School of Business. So then uh, there's a culture of leadership uh, that has developed uh, because of uh, Peter Drucker. But this is then what we're saying, culture. Uh, it fosters a better sense of tolerance and appreciation of diversity. It helps people understand the challenges of the various culture uh, and it shapes the way we think, the way we work, the way we play, uh, what makes uh, a difference uh, between people and ourselves. So it affects all of our values, uh, uh, what's wrong and what's right. Uh, let me uh, end this discussion just by saying that the Global Business Roundtable, as well as the Global Fund for Jesus, wants to bring back the kingdom of God on earth, which means the culture, <clears throat> the culture that God has given us, okay, to love each other, to love God with all of our hearts, our minds, our souls, but to love our, our neighbors as ourselves. Thank you so much. Let me move now to the offering and uh, from the beautiful country of Brazil uh, and from the cultural treasures and, uh, and wealth uh, that we have in Brazil. We will ask Bishop Betao Oliveira, to uh, lead us in the offering. Please, uh, Bishop Betau. Yes, yes, yes. My pleasure. My pleasure to be with you here, all the way from Sao Paulo, Brazil. We are glad to take part of all this discussion and understand that culture and kingdom culture is something very important that we, we can understand how our culture can influence the kingdom and how kingdom can definitely influence our culture. So once we know all these two things, we are so glad to do that. So this is the time for us to just to establish a principle that we have in all the way, the principle of sowing and reap. Doesn't matter the culture, sowing and reap is the principle that you can have all the time. All the time that you have a seed to sow, you for sure have a harvest to reap. So I'm glad that we can do this now, understanding the amplitudes, the all, all spread that you have in our influence as GBR, as Global Fund for Jesus, and we can do these things. And I would like to pray and to encourage each one of us. You have here the account numbers, the Global Fund for Jesus, the Global Fund for Christ, and the ABSA Bank, you have all the details here, the branch code, the account number, or even a SWIFT code for you, whatever you are in the world, and you can send the proof of payment and the telephone number and have all the details here. But let's pray now that understand that this is the moment that we can sow and you can for sure reap. This is kingdom culture. This is the opportunity to have to establish what God has prepared for us. Eyes has not seen, but we have seen already beforehand. We have seen, seen with the eyes of faith. So let's pray and let's offer it to God with our hearts. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the opportunity to have to hear so amazing stories, so amazing perspectives about culture, about society, and about your kingdom. So here we are, sowing into your kingdom sowing into your harvest and having for sure in our hands the fold and fold situation every harvest you want to add to our life 
it starts with the seeds. The forests are in our hands through the seed. We can see the forests through the small seed. We can see the future. We can see the king of God dominating all the earth. So that's what we believe and that's what we do. We take the action now. We take the action now the way you can and the way you can really encourage us and bless. Bless every seed and becoming this harvest full plenty to everyone. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, brothers. Thanks so much for the opportunity. I'm sure that God has all the way to, to bless our lives and to understand how we can activate it, these principles and activate every situation in our lives to prosper. Greetings from, from Brazil to all the all people involved in this moment in this transmission. God bless you all. Amen. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And many greetings and blessings to you from Guatemala over to Brazil, the beautiful country of Brazil. And thank you for the... Bendiciones y rebendiciones. Bendiciones para ti también, querido hermano. Sí, qué and bueno. this is also part of our culture, the different languages that we speak. Sí, uh, qué bueno. Uh, beautiful. I remember when we visited Rio de Janeiro, Camp, uh, Campiña, Campos, uh, Brazil, wow. Sao Paulo. Listen, we hope yes. to be soon there uh, sure. in Brazil or for you to come to visit us. Uh, thank you for the people that are uh, offering to the Global Business Roundtable and particularly the, the uh, goals and objectives and the work of the Global Fund for Jesus. Remember, we want to do, <clears throat> apologize, what Jesus would do if he were physically present today on earth. And therefore, your offering is critical, uh, whatever the Lord places in your heart. Uh, to offer, and this goes to all of our programs that uh, we have and all of our services. Uh, this, thanks, this coming Thanksgiving, we are giving 2,000 two hampers to indigent families, food hampers, uh, uh, school hampers, uh, and also clothing to the needy. Uh, and also remember that the Global Fund for Jesus, the purpose is to help to the disadvantaged, uh, the vulnerable populations with health programs, with education programs, with edu uh, job creation programs, with socioeconomic empowerment, entrepreneurship, uh, with food security programming. So we thank you for contributing to the work of the Global Fund for Jesus. Uh, let's move now to the vote of thanks. And I will ask Mr. Tato Machao uh, to, to do it for us. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Kurt Carlin, and uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, the announcements are as follows. The next GBR International Session will be held on the 25th of September on Zoom. Please be advised that you can watch all the previous GBR International online sessions on the GBR website. The website is www.globalbusinessroundtable.com, as well as on YouTube. We kindly request all members to propose topics and panelists for the GBR international sessions. Kindly forward them to tabang at globalbusinessroundtable.com. The, the Global Business Roundtable is proud to introduce the GBR mobile app for conferences, meetings, online sessions, event registration, live feedback with little time polling and Q&A. The app was created for attendees to easily navigate, communicate, and engage on all our events anywhere and anytime. You are all encouraged to download the app for your convenience. Please note that the GBR Worship CDs and DVDs are available on iTunes, YouTube Music, Amazon, and many more other digital music stores. Catch a new thing on RTM. It's free to air channel as well as TBN and TBN Mzanzi. You are all invited to register in the <clears throat> Global Business Roundtable Network by accessing the GBR website, www.globalbusinessroundtable.com. Please note that the Global Business Roundtable Thanksgiving, as well as the Global Fund for Jesus NGO Grant Awards event will take place on the 20th of November, 2021 in Johannesburg, South Africa. 
For more information, kindly visit the website uh, www.gbrthanksgiving.com. GBR and GFFJ leadership requests all GBR members and GFFJ ambassadors to set aside every Wednesday from 6 uh, to 6 as a day of prayer and fasting. The prayer will take GBR and GFFJ mandate to another level. A list of prayer items is available on the GBR website, www.globalbusinessroundtable.com. Lastly, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to thank each and every participant. Um, we value your time and we appreciate you. First and foremost, I would like to uh, thank Dr. Ricardo Caldron um, for, uh, for his great job of uh, facilitating uh, this uh, project uh, all the way from Guatemala. Uh, thank you so much, uh, we appreciate you. We would also like to thank Ms. Ronaldo Mley from Tanzania for opening the word of prayer. And also I'd like to thank all the speakers uh, for the uh, wonderful presentations, the great presentations. Mr. Uh, C. Adamcio uh, Nzisile from Gabon, Advocate Merusio from Lesotho, uh, Mr. Letumusa Simelani from Eswatini, uh, Ms. Nomonde Boy from South Africa. And also I'd like to I thank Bishop Petau Oliveira all the way from Brazil for uh, conducting the offering and for, for praying for us. Uh, lastly, I would like, to, in anticipation, to thank uh, Dr. Anderson Gondo from Malawi as he will be closing in prayer. And lastly, I would like to thank everyone that has uh, attended this session. Uh, thank you so much and have a great day. Over to you, Dr. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Tato Machau. Uh, let me provide to you some uh, final remarks before we close uh, with a prayer. Uh, let me ask uh, Dr. Roberto Calderon, our Global Executive Director for the Global Business Roundtable to stand ready to do the closing prayer. So the question that we began with was, uh, is it relevant, is culture relevant to today's society. And uh, I think we have heard today that, that the, the, the sounding, uh, uh, resounding response is yes, it is relevant. Uh, indeed it is relevant because culture helps form the structure and the foundation of uh, individuals, of families, of groups, of businesses, uh, of uh, populations, uh, and our society. So, so it's, it's, it's a foundation. It's, it's a foundational principle. It's dynamic, it's changing, uh, but uh, culture reminds us that we are part of a history uh, and that it defines our past. And also it shapes who we are today and who we will likely be tomorrow. Uh, but uh, I want to bring to your attention the cultural influence of Christianity because we cannot deny that our Lord came uh, 2000 years ago and he established a culture, a culture that we are promoting and advocating. Uh, in this uh, culture promotion, we have seen all of the benefits that the world has uh, received, that people have received globally. Uh, Christianity includes uh, benefits in social welfare, uh, the founding hospitals in, in economics, uh, fund, uh, which, which in reality it, it is, called, it is uh, related to the Protestant work ethics uh, that we have spoken about, uh, founding natural laws, uh, which would later influence all of the creation of international laws, the laws of God, the Ten Commandments. Remember the Deuteronomy and Moses uh, and Joshua telling the laws and the norms and the regulations to the Jewish people and to all of us. So the cultural influence uh, in, in politics, architecture, literature, public uh, and personal hygiene and family life of Christianity is tremendous. Uh, so we thank uh, God really for coming to earth 
Jesus Christ for coming to earth to establish this culture amongst us. Uh, this is what we want to do, to promote this culture of loving each other as our neighbor. And this is what GBR and this is what GFFJ stands for. So thank you for joining us today. I will say goodbye right now before we close uh, with our prayer, just to let you know that we have these sessions every Saturday. You are invited to come, to participate, to make comments, to ask questions, and bring your family. Come with your family. Don't come alone. And uh, extend invitations to your networks, to your contacts for our Global Business Roundtable International Sessions. So thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. It's been my privilege and blessing to have been the anchor, facilitator, and program director. And until we meet again, adios, the Spanish word for a goodbye in Guatemala. Uh, in, uh, uh, adios to everyone. And now let me ask Dr. Roberto Calderon, Your Excellency, to close the international session with a prayer. For those of us who want to stay longer, we will have praise and worship music to continue to glorify and thank our Lord. Uh, Your Excellency Roberto, please close with a prayer. Thank you, Your Excellency, Dr. Ricardo Calderon, and thank you for all the participants in this international session. I want to ask you to bow your heads and let's pray. Dear Lord, we are here today with open hands and open hearts, ready to depend on you to help us through this day and all days of our lives and to bring your way the way you want us to do. Help us like Nehemiah, help us to come to you for guidance, strength, provision and protection as we face tough choices and hard situations, as we face influences from cultures that are not according to your kingdom. Help us to remember that you are our father and we are your children and we are your representatives to the world around us. Help us live today in a way that brings honor to your holy name. We bless every member that has listened to this international session and we are at your service. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. Amen and amen, and thank you all. Have a blessed new week, and until next Saturday when we meet again. Adios and goodbye.